I've just been experimenting with an amazing new oil painting technique that is an absolute game changer. The best thing about it is it's really simple. I've just never done it before. I've got an exhibition coming up that I need 16 new pieces for. I usually work in acrylics or pastel for my exhibitions and this one is piece number seven. I started this painting with the intention of using acrylics. However, very quickly, I ran into a problem. It's so hot here in the UK that my acrylic paints are just drying way too fast. Even though I've added a slow drying medium to my paint, it's still not blending as smoothly as I'd like it to. With this piece, I wanted to paint something a little bit different than my usual front on portrait. I wanted to try a new perspective on the giraffe and really make it feel like this huge creature is looking down on you from above. I decided that I needed a new approach. First, I did a quick background blocking with acrylics. I wanted the background sky looking really soft and blurry, and even with medium, this was pretty difficult getting anywhere close to an even finish. With this painting, building up layers of acrylics just isn't going to work. I'm gonna have to get out the oils and start doing some oil painting. This is gonna give me a new challenge because I've got the exhibition coming up next month and oil paints take ages to dry. Acrylics dry too fast, oils dry too slow, which presented a massive problem. So to give the painting the best chance of drying in time, I decided that I needed to work in as few layers as possible which is very different from my usual technique. I'm just gonna stop the video right there. You might be thinking, why not just use some fast drying mediums like Winsor & Newton's Liquin or Gamblin's Galkid? That way you can paint a layer, let it dry overnight, and then work on the next layer the next day. Well, that will be brilliant, but I don't have any, so I can't. Instead, I decided to use an a la prima approach and paint wet in wet. But rather than painting everything and building up the basic shapes everywhere, I thought it'd be cool to try painting a small section at a time to completion. Now, this is the way that I usually work with pastels, and it's a way that a lot of people draw. I wouldn't usually ever paint like this, as I think the layering with different sized brushes and different techniques add variation and interest to a piece. So, painting the small sections to completion posed another challenge. I needed to intentionally make sure that I was adding that painterly quality, the varied mark making, and life to the painting. There was another issue too. I thought that the underpainting I did would be enough, and the oil paints would be opaque enough to cover up those underlayers. I wanted to complete this piece in a single layer, but I was having some issues with some of the paint being a little bit transparent. I was using the paint straight from the tube, so I wasn't diluting the pigments, but I do think the quality of the paint was the issue. I didn't have time or the money to buy new paints, so my solution to both of my problems was to paint a small section with a filbert brush, focusing on some of the bigger shapes and base colours, then while it was still wet, use a smaller, softer detail brush to refine those shapes, add interesting marks, layer more paint over the transparent areas, and just generally refine the painting. The technique of blocking in with the large brush and then blending and refining with the smaller brush is working really well. The only issue is it's still taking forever and I am starting to run out of time. Originally, I wanted this painting to be a one, maybe two day at a push, but it's already day four and I've not even got to the background yet. Even though it was taking a bit longer than expected, I still don't think I would have been able to paint this piece as well with acrylics. The four to five layers that I would need to do to get anywhere close to the quality of finish that I would have wanted would have taken even longer with acrylics. 
Not to mention, I would have really struggled blending with acrylics in the heat. The oils allowed me to really think about my colours within the giraffe, and I could really focus in on one area and get a nice amount of detail, but not too much, but just enough to give that impression of realism. Also, the progression of this piece was so much more interesting. Seeing it come to life section by section, it actually helped keep me motivated to keep working and stop me getting lazy with parts of the piece. The background oil layer was last. It was just a case of mixing the right colours, putting them on top of the matching acrylic base, and then blending them together with a soft fan brush to create that really soft, slightly out of focus sky. I wanted the viewer to be drawn straight to the giraffe, so that's where all of the detail is. I then added the tree in the corner to help balance the composition and prevent the viewer's eyes being led off the edge of the canvas. I am actually buzzing with how this painting's turned out and I cannot wait to start developing this technique, experimenting with it and just creating an entirely new set of paintings with this completely game-changing technique that I think I'm going to be using for, well, the rest of my painting life. So, why is this technique such a game changer for me, and what did I learn from doing it? Well, first of all, it was really cool watching the piece come to life, section by section. And it was also much faster than if I'd tried to achieve the same effect with acrylics. It also required much fewer layers than acrylics to achieve that opaque look that I wanted the paint to have. There were actually a couple of drawbacks, so I did mention that the transparency of the paint in some cases was an issue, I managed to fix it, but I think I've come up with a better solution. Next time when I'm doing this technique, and I will do this technique again because it's absolutely fantastic, I think the easiest solution is going to be to put a darker and more opaque base layer of acrylics down on the subject too, and not just the background. I also didn't go into too much detail with the giraffe's fur because it's so short. But if you wanted to paint something with longer, more realistic fur, then why don't you check out this video here? As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.